morning. Hey, how you going? So I got your request. What were you wanting to propose for a video today? I want to design and build a CNC router leveraging 3D printed parts. Design, design and build. You, you know there are kits you can buy, right? Yeah, but why buy one for like a thousand dollars when I can make one for more? That'd be nonsense. You make a good point. And how's the project started out? It's, it's gone pretty good. I've only had to iterate the CAD model for, you know, about 96 times. Well, viewers do love a failure. <laughs> good luck with the video. If I've learned anything over the last few years completing woodworking projects, it's that I need a CNC router. Its versatility in preparing wood, finishing wood and everything in between is unrivaled. So in typical tight house fashion, this is what I've come up with. It's a design that uses V-slot aluminium extrusion on which rollers run that are mounted to 3D printed carriages. Now I don't have high hopes for the longevity of this roller system, so the design of the Z-axis does deviate to save future rework effort. These are 20mm rails and wide carriage blocks. To drive this whole system I'll be using an Arduino Uno paired with a CNC shield and NEMA 17 steppers. I'm hoping to be able to use this tool to thickness slabs, finish river resin serving boards and small coffee tables as well as engrave and sculpt wood and possibly aluminium. I didn't have much success building a DIY lathe that could cut aluminium but I have high hopes nevertheless. This build will necessitate a lot of parts, and some which will probably change over the course of the build, so I'll put everything I use in the listing description. The highlights are the T8 lead screws and 8040 aluminium profile. The beauty of using aluminium extrusion and being able to buy it in a variety of lengths is that this machine's cutting area is infinitely configurable. The carriages will all look something like this, with eight rollers engaging on the profile, hopefully distributing the cutting loads and not mincing the POM wheels. These feet blocks will go on each corner of the aluminium extrusion to ensure there's sufficient clearance between the bottom surface for the carriages to slide freely. To kick off the build, I'm tapping holes in the aluminium extrusion to mount these feet or the carriage plates in the case of the Y-axis. also quite a few parts to print. I don't hold much hope for these parts lasting very long though. I'm just using PLA for now due to the ease in which it prints, and they ended up being much less rigid than I expected. I'm crossing all appendages that these parts last long enough for me to machine wooden or aluminium replacements. A number of these 3D printed parts need to be tapped. Also, the rollers on each carriage require precise spacing in order to engage with the aluminium profile on both surfaces. So make sure to check out the build info sheet for this machine which details what parts need to be used where.
With the carriages now loosely assembled, they can be fitted to the aluminium profiles, and the eccentric nuts tightened until there's no play in the carriage, but it still moves smoothly and without resistance. Everything was going pretty swimmingly until it came to the Z-axis. These linear rails are high precision devices and whatever surface they are mounted to requires a similar level of precision. A loose fit worked fine, but tightening up the bolts almost locked the carriage in position. In the end, I found this to be due to one major flaw in the 3D prints, surface flatness. The linear rails were not mounted in the same plane and thus would be excessively loaded when rigidly attached. This was resolved with a bit of sanding and to ensure the rails were parallel I printed a jig to set the correct spacing. With the Z-axis complete, I can attach the router mounting fixture, which will hold my quarter inch trimmer router. With everything now ready to go, it's time for this machine to be fully assembled. In the next video, I'll cover the electronics architecture of the router and finish off the build. So you don't miss that video, I recommend you go ahead and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this first part, please chuck us a like.